Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Quentum GK. I'm Donna Reyes, and I am your weekly host in this weekly Quentuhan. And uh, we're excited tonight that uh, we have a very special guest. Every week, naman, special ang guest natin, di ba? But this time, I was telling him earlier, I get so nervous when I interview journalists, right? But he tells me I'm not a journalist. I am I am part of the Gawad Kalinga family. And so, friends, please help me welcome Mr. Jose Maria Montelibano and to some of us, Tito Boy Montelibano. Ayan. Hello, Tito Boy. Hello, good evening there. Good morning to me. <laughs> <laughs> good morning there in the Philippines and good morning to everyone who's uh, watching us from the Philippines. And of course, good evening to everyone here in the U.S., uh, we're hoping we're also being watched in other parts of the world, right, Tito? So, uh, Tito, yeah, it's been a while. How have you been? Oh, quarantine. Quarantine. <laughs> quarantine. So, I have been doing much more work online. Okay. But how are you and Tita M, Tita Maria, and the family? Where? We're okay. We are taking care of ourselves. We know, we know how serious it is. So, so to speak. At the same time, we refuse to be paralyzed into inactivity. Mm -hmm. So we make sure, while we are cautious, that we remain very productive. Good, good. That's good to hear. And I, I hope you and Tita M and the entire family stay safe and healthy. Um, so I introduced you as a journalist um, because, you know, because that's how I've known you. I thought both uh, you and Tita M were in, you know, broadcast media in, you know, in uh, that you're both journalists. And so you told me earlier that, and actually I read an article that you wrote from two years ago on Philippine uh, Daily Inquirer that you were not really a writer when you were invited to uh, write for, for that paper. So Tito, can just uh, give us a little bit of background of what, you know, what your, I guess, your discipline is or, you know, what, uh, I understand you were in the corporate world and all of that. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are curious to know as well. Well, I retired from the corporate world in my mid-30s. And I went into uh, community development work of that time. And this year, 2021, is my anniversary with both in writing and with GK. They are only months apart. Wow. Okay, so uh, I was introduced to GK uh, in 2001. And I started writing uh, a weekly article in a digital uh, version of uh, the Inquirer also in 2001. So I think you are not exactly wrong. <laughs> but you said in, in that article, Tito, that you hesitated to write at that time or you weren't sure what to you know, what to write about. And uh, you were, you know, you were actually given the opportunity. Uh, you were invited to write as many times as you want during the week. And then you decided I'm going to write, you know, once a week. So did you have um, some reservations about uh, doing a, that weekly for, uh, column? Well, writing was not my, my main line. Uh, we have lots of Thoughts, I have lots of ideas, I have lots of experiences, lots of insights, and they were just kept in me. So writing was a way for me to, you know, like a release. Okay, so mm -hmm. I, I write because I cannot keep, I cannot keep everything that is inside because many of them, I believe, will be useful to to other to other people no so but of course my my main love uh, in life has been maybe uh, storytelling uh, looking at how people 
communities, societies live, uh, our history. I'd like to know where mankind is going, especially the Filipino. So all of this, all of this was already there building up. And then I met GK, and then I was asked to write. And both to me are in perfect uh, harmony. It, it, that's actually perfect timing at na you know you had the, you were given that platform of writing just you know just in time when you were starting your work with Gawad Karina. You also said in that article that most of the of the topics you wrote about in the at that time 17 years so it's going to be 19 years now or 20 years now this year this year 20 years 20 years all right so uh so you said that most of the things you talked about was about addressing poverty and you had become very passionate about it um, ever since your work or ever since you started going to Banahao. Is that where you did your commu that community development yes. um, work? So tell us a little bit more about that. Well, you know, I, I am one of... Uh, a few percentage of Filipinos that grew up in a bubble. So that's how we, we know uh, about the Philippines. We know about ourselves. We thought we were the people. Uh, and then I went into the corporate life and it remained the same. It was still a bubble. And I discovered uh, the mountain and I discovered the community and I I experienced living with now what I know to be ordinary Filipinos, the majority of Filipinos, neither very poor, neither rich. Okay, so I would say that this is the 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 middle the middle Filipino, but it's a big middle, but it is predominantly more on the lower economic side. So it, it introduced me to my people for the first time in the mid eighties. I, I learned I was not the Filipino. I am a Filipino, but I'm not representative of our people. And there I learned to know the representatives, the real representatives, those who really represented. And then I discovered the poverty up close. It wasn't anymore an intellectual thing. It wasn't a statistic. I learned about it and I, I simply sympathized, right? I thought that I had a very happy uh, childhood and I thought that maybe other Filipino children should be given a similar opportunity for for happiness. No? So that's what really drew me to do experiment with community work because I was not, of course, a community worker. I was a jet setter in, a, in the corporate world. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I went on a very different 180 degree turn to complete my 360, so to speak. So I spent 17 years there. Uh, half of my life in the mountain and half where I live, of course, in the, in, in the city. Then I met GK and immediately I did not hesitate in leaving my main line of work in the mountain when I sensed the potential of GK, that GK represented, I mean, the dreams of GK represented my dreams. That I said with GK, I could live the rest of my life and I would never get bored. I would always be striving for something better, higher. And that's why up to today, I, I still cannot see after 20 years, I cannot see myself outside of that GK spirit. No, I cannot. And everything I do, I have to link it. It has to be harmonized, no, uh, or else uh, it would it would just stress me out. So, Tito, can can you tell us? You've mentioned uh, GK already uh, several times, obviously. Um, 
But can you tell us how you were introduced to, to Gawad Kalinga? Some of us know that you and, and Tito Tony are you know, friends from way back, but you know, I, I assume that's not the friendship is not the only reason why both of you are involved in, in the work for, for the poor. So can you tell us a little bit more about how Gawad Kalinga was introduced to you or how you were introduced to Gawad Kalinga? Well, it, it, is, uh, it is Tony Meloto that really began it for me, but we were not friends. I met, I met uh, Tony Meloto only a few months before I was drawn into GK because of him. I, he, was not, he was not an old friend. The friendship grew because we shared, we shared dreams together, and he did he followed his he followed his mission in his way. I tried to I tried to be in pace with uh, with him, but of course we are very different people. We grew up in opposite environments. And I thought that I would lend my, my knowledge and my insights from my background and go in the same path as him, where he was using his own insights from his own background. And together, we, we were a very, very good fit, I, I must say. You know? So uh, he introduced uh, GK to me really not as just an anti-poverty work, but very quickly I sensed that it was real nation building. It is not a slogan. It is, it is, it is my understanding. I, it was also my understanding that was the way he looked at it. But of course, I had always, I had always grown up in an environment where Politics was somewhere around. I was, I was never inside a politics directly, but I was always beside it by force of circumstance, family, societal uh, network, etc. You know. So when Tony mentioned that in 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 its gist, GK is nation building, I understood. And this time I said, I will take this journey of nation building because it's really building the nation from the bottom. I only knew how to build it from the top. Everything is from leadership. And I saw that it was not moving as fast. It was not all wrong, but it was too slow to help the people who are suffering. So I thought I would take really a deep dive into the dynamics of building a nation from the weakest point. Okay, and I've, I've been there, no? I've been there, I use everything that I know to pour it to that weakest sector that we have, because that sector happens also to be the biggest sector in our society. Ito, you're the head of special projects for Gawad Kalinga. Can you explain to us exactly what, what special projects are and um, how can people be part of it? Or is there, do you have a team? How does that work? Well, uh, you know, when, when GK began, uh, there were very few people who were there that I know and I could I could harmonize with in my understanding of DK because most really most really started from compassion. No, talagang they really wanted it was really about charity, really about loving and caring for the poor. And of course, that inspired me. But at the same time, I could not leave who I was and what I also dreamt of. And I wanted to be driven by the same compassion, but I wanted that compassion to be the fuel 
for my own understanding of vision. So I was just uh, beside Tony most of the time because I, it was like I was trying to catch up with what he already knew because GK was already around five years old when I met it. And I did not like to go into it without understanding its roots. Mm -hmm. So I was with Tony every day for several years, trying to absorb uh, everything. And Tony was always giving out assignments, the most of which, of course, always from the time that I was introduced to GK, was always with uh, Luis. Mm -hmm. Okay, but since uh, Luis was always traveling, I mean, moving around the country, uh, I had very little time with him. You know, I, I, Tony was in the office and, and I could, you know, I could be with him more often. And people began to ask, uh, what does boy do? I think Tony got tired of <laughs> explaining that, uh, GK was not so hierarchical, you know, that one I think was, was not able to, to really convince people that he wanted a more horizontal uh, type of structure. So he gave me the title uh, that he thought would answer most questions, at the same time not answer the question. <laughs> so he said special projects, which means I can do anything that GK asks me to do. I don't have to stay fit in a, in a particular section mm -hmm. or department or, or, or group. And so I was a head of special projects alone up to today <laughs> alone. So if I, if there is something that Luis and Dan would like me to do, I do that. Okay. If there is something that I want to do, because I think it will enhance and further the GK mission, I do it on my own. I get support from, the, from my passion and from the clarity of the project or, or the program that I, I want to experiment with. Uh -huh. Then, uh, you know, you know, Donna, GK by now is also an organization uh, by, by force of circumstance because we accept resources from the public mm -hmm. and we are accountable for those resources. So we are forced to take on structure when structure is really slowing down movement. Okay, so I'm, I'm there. I don't like to be, you know, I don't like to be slowed down. So I, I'm in the part of GK that has the least structure. But mm -hmm. to do that, I have to do it mostly alone in the beginning until GK as a structure sees that any initiative or ideas or the principles behind what I do can be adopted by the structure. So if, if I wait for GK as a movement to, to support me in an initiative, I, I cannot do anything because mm -hmm. GK is already up to here. Right. So Granada, it's already so undermanned in the context of what it wants to do. It right. wants to do everything already. So mm -hmm. that's it. I, I, I think I'm trusted enough by the leadership that I will not do anything that will harm GK. So <laughs> they let me, they let me be and I keep trying to show how it can be done by myself. And if it's not the right way, it's so easy for one person to shift. It's mm -hmm. not easy for a whole org to shift. True, that, that, that totally makes sense, Tito. 
that would be a good segue to the next uh, segment of my of my question, which is all about walang iwanan alliance. But before we get to that, actually, I'm I'm smiling and laughing while you're saying that because now I'm thinking, and Maricel is actually watching. Is Quentin GK a special project? <laughs> So now, I, so now I'm thinking. Okay, so baka, baka it now it you know, maybe Quantum GK is just the start. So I don't know now what Maricel will ask me to do for for GK USA because Quantum GK just came about and it was supposed to be just a reporting tool, a platform for area directors here in uh you know GK USA and now it's this weekly um webisode. I think that's what the young people call it. Um. You know, for me, you know, nakikipagkwentuhan lang ako. I'm chatting, I'm having, you know, the time of my life. I get to interview people like you. It's not really an interview, it's just a conversation. But we'll talk about Walang Iwanan Alliance in just a couple of, you know, a couple of minutes here. I want to read some of the comments from uh, Facebook Live from Tita Carol Tulud, our area director in uh, Houston. Bong and I are very glad to have Kuya Boy on Kwentong GK USA. We are very excited to hear your cuento. Um, from Seferino Amores, good morning, Tito Boy. Regards from Texas, the Lone Star State. And then from Tita Josie, I mean, from Josie Castro, hi, Kuya Boy. Great to see you, Kuya Boy. Um, and then from Chacha Del Rosario, uh, Mercado Mabuhay, GK USA. From Sunny Ramirez, Sunny and Bell from New Jersey watching. Hello, everyone. From Tito June Rafinian, great to see you, boy. From Tess de la, de la Sean Javier, good morning from GK Consuelo. Hello, Tito Boy. From Maricel Villanueva, striving for something better and higher, and you found it in the GK spirit like most. Um, from Alex Gutierrez, hello, Kuya Boy. From Boeing, Dulce Rivera, hi, Kuya Boy. From Dita Freddy Guevara, oh my goodness, Kuya Freddy. That's <laughs> I have not heard from you in a long time, so I'm I'm so super happy that we're doing Quantum GK. For most of us, GK was a leap of faith over substance. Joy Guillema, hi Tito Boy, and then from of course my husband Ravi, uh, hi Tito Boy. And may I also, with your indulgence, Tito Boy, may I just greet my my husband? Happy anniversary! <laughs> we're twenty years today. We were oh. married when we started with uh, Gawad Kalinga in 2003. So one year pa lang kami married noon. And uh, yeah, and uh, today uh, is our 20th anniversary. So happy anniversary. Wow. <laughs> anniversary. Wow. <laughs> and, um, uh, I, will, yes. I will interrupt. Okay. Yes, Tito. Yung kwentong GK. Uh, you may not know it, but this is really infancy stage. You will grow this, and you need you need to grow this. Uh, but I know you will get you will get all the hints. Life will give you all the all the hints you now, because the story of GK is the story of our own people. Okay, I know that you are. Americans, but you are. This is now my the 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 socio political part of me. When I was in the states for many years doing GK work, it came to me that the contribution of Filipinos who are now Americans is to bring the best of their culture to American society because American society has made that decision to be multicultural. So not to bring our bad habits, but to bring the best in our culture, to bring it there. And that becomes the special contribution of Filipino Americans to America. And GK, can be used as a vehicle for that expression of what is best in us mm -hmm. and offer it in gratitude to a country that has accepted, accepted you 
and to offer it as a methodology for creating even a better America. Okay, that's it. That's my... <laughs> well, th life. thank you, Tita Boy, for, for saying that. It's very encouraging and also very... You know, like I said, uh, when when Marisel told me about this, I wasn't really sure if she was just thinking of something for me to do. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, um, if you know, if if that's uh, where God is leading us to for 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 this platform to grow, and you know, we just follow, right? And and um, one thing you said about Gawad Kalinga is that it's not it's it's only a structure because. It has to be in terms of you know accepting resources like you mentioned earlier, but it is it is very fluid in that it can grow in so many different ways, and it does grow in so I mean we've seen it grow in so many different ways in ways that we did not even imagine. Maybe Tito Tony did not even imagine that you know at that time when 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 uh, they started Gawat Kalinga, right? And uh, and it continues to grow in that way, and and that to me makes it even more special it's not it's not um it's not like any other organization um in that you know it 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 grows it grows even you know even exponentially you know in terms of in terms of the um of the number of lives that we touch um and i'm not just talking about the beneficiaries of the homes or the livelihood or what have you or the, or the food that we we distribute but you know changing our own lives really right so Tito, um, uh, there's more uh, notes here, more comments. Uh, we take from Maris, uh, from Maricel, we take you from Tito Boy when it comes to starting things. Tito Boy is his own staff, but he gets support. <laughs> Tita Josie Disterho, uh, great to see you, boy. And Donna, yours is a very good special project for now. <laughs> from Chad Chad Del Rosario, Mercado, we are his young support. Um, and then, uh, oh, thank you. Uh, happy anniversary now to me and, and Robbie. From Tita Josie, Tita Maricel, and Tita Carol, the, and Josie Castro. And also from Tita Jonathan. Thank you so much. So, Tito Boy, let's talk about Walang Iwanan Alliance. For those of us who have been part of Gawad Kanina, especially in its early years, we know that Walang, Walang Iwanan is a Gawad Kanina slogan, right? It's something that we say all the time. It's something that we chat all the time, especially in, in events, no matter how small or big. It, can, it may be a small gathering at somebody's house. We say Walang Iwanan, or it can be the summit where there's thousands of people who come. We, we shout Walang Iwanan. And now we have the Walang Iwanan Alliance. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, for several years now, although it started uh, quietly and this is already this is already the the the, the heart of Luis and the mind of Luis that Gawad Kalinga must break down all barriers. It cannot it cannot be seen more as an org than a movement. Because it wants to draw everybody, if it is to be true to its nation-building mission, we cannot we cannot build a mission in a very divided form. All right. So, but in the NGO world, we have we have this uh, situation that everyone works for itself and for its cause because they think that it's the only way it can also survive. And over the years of this kind of attitude of just pushing and promoting your own, what happens is that we become more competitors than collaborators. And Luis had been wanting to change this but he is also pragmatic and he knows it cannot just happen. So I guess we, my few, my few occasions with Luis, we do go into more deep uh, brainstorming, so to speak. We share our sentiments, especially moving forward and especially on my part because of my age. I, I, I know 
you know, that it has to happen soon because I want to see more fruits from my own labor selfishly. All right. So this is one of them. Uh, recently, Louise, because of the pandemic, challenged uh, everyone. I think it was sometime July. That, hey, we should not wait for orders from the headquarters. He said, uh, even though we are locked down in our homes, one, we should give our eight hours a day. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's no excuse being at home. Two, because we are at home and then we don't have travel time. Maybe we should give more than eight hours a day. <laughs> so, two, if you see that there's something that needs to be done from the heart of GK, do it, do not wait for orders. Do not wait for instructions. That was July. Well, hunger has always been a special concern of mine, even inside GK. Uh, the, original, the original description of poverty was very short and simple from Luis and Tony. Landlessness, homelessness, hunger. Any two of the three makes you a priority audience of GK. All right, recently, uh, Luis added water and education, which began to be highlighted because of the pandemic and because of its long-term uh, necessity in, in our lives. But I was there uh, with, with landlessness and homelessness, and I did not see yet in the you know, about five years into GK, I did not see yet the hunger part of it. No, but somehow, uh, parang masakit sa akin or nagagalit ako no, uh, at the hunger that we experience in the country. So I, I tried to do certain initiatives with hunger as early as around 2007, 2008 with my household then you know, and thankfully they supported me I did I have not stopped from from that then in last year after Luis gave that signal we began to follow we began to follow the the extreme rapid rise of hunger in Metro Manila and it was very alarming for me because I was seeing hunger, from other places that were usually hit by calamities. But it was the first time that I saw it in Metro Manila itself, and Metro Manila had no one to run to. While previously, those who were hit by hunger because of calamities would run to the urban areas, and including Metro Manila. But Metro Manila was immobilized, locked down, and so I thought, oh, this, we are inside the pressure cooker. So I said, I better do something about hunger. So I asked Luis, I want to reach out to others. Then Luis said, go. Okay. I reached out to my classmates in the Ateneo, and I asked them if they could support me, and they said, yes. I explained the situation of hunger in Metro Manila. They said, yes. So we used the foundation. Because the Walang Iwanan Alliance is just a loose gathering. If there's a movement, this is it. Mm -hmm. okay, the foundation is the financial administrator of the movement. That is, that is my class uh, contribution, the, the contribution of the class two to the movement, that they will take care of all of the accounting at their own cost, at their own time. No, so I have classmates doing that every day. Then, then GK, of course. So that's how we started, just GK and, and uh, our class foundation through me as the common, as the common face. Mm -hmm. Then I reached out to everybody with a short-term program. 
to address that hunger in Metro Manila with the fear of food riots in my mind then. No, that was in August when I asked the class. In September, we, we launched it. No? So that's the birth of, of uh, Walang Iwanan Alliance. So of course, you can see from the name <laughs> where the influence is coming from. And we wanted it to be a message of hope. And I think there is no greater race for hope than Walang Iwanan for the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Tito, um, you were uh, one of the speakers at a hunger forum in December, and you shared some statistics uh, from the SWS hunger incidents. You mentioned that it was in its all-time low in December of 2019 at 8.8%. And then in May, I'm just sharing with everyone who may yes. not be familiar with this, these statistics, and this, are, this just blew my mind. Um, so from 8.8%, uh, of hunger incidents in December 2019 by May 2020 so about ilang months lang yan no it went up to 16.7% and then in July it was 20.9% in September it was 30.7% very alarming talaga so um how are we uh, i understand you you know you you uh you mobilized your classmates and you know your uh, you're working, uh, you, you, you established Walang Iwanan Alliance, but also, you know, working side by side with Gawad Kalinga. Um, how are we, how are you implementing, um, you know, addressing this uh, hunger problem? Well, the statistics that you mentioned uh, made me realize in reflection of the same statistics that the manner by which we were going about addressing hunger was simply inadequate. It would never work in that situation then. Why? Because we look at statistics as though, and uh, you know, th there are numbers and then that's it. We, then we don't think deeper when we see the numbers. When hunger incidences are reported, let us say, at 20%, what does that mean? It means more than just 20% have experienced hunger. It means that they experienced hunger despite the efforts of everyone, including government, including Gawad Kalinga, including the church. So that is already the, the net effect mm -hmm. of all our intervention and still 20% fell through the cracks. Okay, so I said it's a time to look at these statistics in another way, and that will guide us moving forward how to address it. Now, we reached 30 on the average in September. That was actually around September. Mm -hmm. Up to 16, something again. After that, by the end of circa November. Why? Because we made noise. One of the reasons why hunger can go up is because nobody cares enough about hunger until it becomes an emergency. You see, we have, we have a very high tolerance of hunger, we need to see it in front of us before we act. And most of us don't see the hungry. And no one was making noise for the hungry. All right, GK was fundraising already for Katina. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not the noise that I thought was enough because we were in a very unusual uh, situation. That noise made people move. I'm not saying it was because of us, but yes, it we were. It was partly because of us, but it affirmed our view in August that noise itself would address that spike, and it did by half. It did in two months. It cut it by half by what by noise. 
Because when people learn about it, people naturally want to help the hungry. You don't have to convince people about helping the hungry, but you have to show them the hungry. You have to talk wow. about the hungry. So the awareness part of that was what I saw as an additional force that can help the traditional forces already mm -hmm. doing anti-hunger. Yeah. Like so we looked at the state of NGOs. Of course, I cannot work with government because they should do it on their own. They, you know, they have their own obligations. But we as citizens, we also have our obligations. And I thought that for citizens, I would have to do a better study than other people. What is missing in the, in the puzzle? And this is what I discovered, that those who are helping with uh, anti-hunger work, even from the donation part, has always stayed within a certain sector and level. Okay, so I look for another sector, another level that was not tired of donating. Wala pang donor fatigue. Mm -hmm. And I discovered that they are our young. So I made, I thought to myself, why don't I target the Filipinos who are 18 to 44 years old, because they comprise about 70% of the population. Two, they have no donor fatigue yet. Three, they help once in a while, but they can help more often than they know. And four, make everyone realize it takes only 20, in our case, 25 uh, pesos a meal mm -hmm. a day, or, you know, to, to stop the hunger of one person. So that means everybody has that capacity. So I thought all of these insights and messages were not yet out in the market. And that is what we made our mission. Wow. When I asked you that question, I was I was along the lines of the, you know, of the feeding program that Kusina and Kalinga is doing already. So I was curious to know what you know walang iwanan alliance would be doing to you know, to supplement that or to you know in addition to what uh k and k kusina ng kalinga is already doing and that just blows my mind how you know like raising awareness can impact th the those statistics that you shared by like half right from 30.7 you said 16 percent na lang went down so and this you know and and, and it just made me realize how, you know, how really important it is to keep talking and to keep sharing and to just, you know, um, just get the word out and, uh, and uh, encourage people to be a part of it. Now, this 18 to 44 years old, Dito, I thought you mentioned um, a statistic of how, what percentage of the population of the Philippines that is. Did you, did, did you mention that? I, that? For some reason, it escapes me and I, I, uh, I did not uh, write that down. I assume that the bigger, right, percentage of the population. It's about uh, roughly uh, anywhere from 65 to 70 percent. Right, right. That's what I thought it was. And that's a big percentage. And you're right. There's so much that that demographic, you know, can do. That That's a, such a strong number. Nalungkot nga ako when you said 18 to 44, hindi na pala ako youth. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> lagpas, lagpas na pala ako. <laughs> um, so um, it was also very refreshing to see uh, Ding Dong Dantes in that, you know, um, in that uh, hunger forum. Speaking of reaching out to, you know, to many people, I mean, you know, he has that uh, Yes Pinoy uh, Foundation. And he said, hindi na daw siya youth, right? He's not, uh, he's uh, 40 years old. And so technically he's not youth anymore. So that makes me happy again. Back to happy, yay! <laughs> <laughs> so he said that, you know, he's a, uh, I, I like how we're, you know, engaging people who have influence like that, right? Like, because they just have a masa yung reach, eh, di ba? Maraming, you can reach to as, as, as many people as possible and they don't necessarily have to be, 
uh, you know, the super wealthy people or your people who have, you know, uh, so much success in their life. Like you said, you know, 25 pesos can, uh, can it's already one meal and, you know, and uh, there, there could be so many people who, who could be uh, a part of that and, you know, and give their share and do their duties as, as citizens, like you said, right? Um, so Tito, what is, you know, what gives you hope? What, you know, what, you can be retiring already. I'm not telling you to retire, but you can relax. <laughs> or you know somebody, actually, I, I got this uh, term from a very, you know, a, a very good, uh, um, she was the uh, CFO of, uh, Chief Financial Officer of the Museum of Contemporary Art here in Chicago, and she's Philam. <laughs> so I'm stealing this phrase from her. She said she retired from a, uh, from her position, she said, I'm not retiring, I'm rewiring. And I thought I'd share that because it's so appropriate and so bagay na bagay say it's so fitting in, you know, in everything that you've been doing. But you, you can relax, and but obviously you're, pro you're enjoying this also, right? But what gives you hope um, with everything, you know, uh, that's going on? And you can be, uh, when a lot of people, you know, can be cynical or can be... Uh, you know, um, doubtful. Um, what gives you hope and keeps you, what keeps you going and being being part of uh, Gawad Kalinga for 20 years now? Well, uh, <clears throat> I think I think we cannot we cannot go deep enough to give us the enough to give us a clarity that we must continue what we do. Uh, without convictions, no, without faith in something very clear, something very clear to us, and I mean, faith comes in 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 many versions. No? To me, I try to understand what creation is, what the purpose of humanity is, and that whether I have hope or not there is a design that is more powerful than me and my choice is do i harmonize with that or do i go against it all right so of course the, the choice is also for me <laughs> quite quite obvious uh, i believe in this because i see i see it as this is what life is, and I see my my role for myself, and I see that role in harmony with the the visions and the the missions of many people, including GK. In the end, in the end, we do it for ourselves. In the end, it is us. Uh, when you're asking me. You're asking me, you're not asking Gawad Kalinga, you're asking me, the person, but yes, this person is giving it to Gawad Kalinga, is giving it to Walang Iwan Alliance because it fits, it suits my spirit, it fits my understanding. And, and uh, how can anyone retire from that? I, I how, how, <laughs> How do how do you change the way you understand things? You know, because a certain date comes. Mm -hmm. You change it only when you understand it in a different way, in a better way, in a deeper way. That's the only time that you change it. So those people who have obviously retired, they are not retired as well. That is the choice of their lives. It is what they want to do. This is what I want to do. You know, I would not feel at ease if I were not doing this. Okay, so you're right. Uh, I have to enjoy it, Donna. I have to enjoy it. I have to enjoy it with, with all the challenges. I have to enjoy it. Right? And I have to see that my enjoyment contributes to the well-being of others. Okay, that's all that I check. Is this mine alone or others can also benefit from it if it's mine alone i keep it to me <laughs> it's all right I, I i i don't mind i have i have very 
private time. Okay, uh, but this is something that I believe makes me fuller as a person, believing in what I believe in and sharing it. You know? So going back to uh, the latest exhortation of Louise in a quick understanding of GK is to spread the culture of caring and sharing in its most simple terms, right? So I, I can understand that very well, and I would like to, to live that. GK is only a name, okay? It's a name. You don't have to be in GK to be GK. All you have to do is to care and share. And as far as we are concerned, you are in the family of GK. <laughs> so that's about it. <laughs> so, Tito, when, when this is this is maybe oh my goodness, I forget what year that was when we had the uh, the Gawad Kalinga movie, the trilogy. At that time, I was feeling so you know, uh, you know, I, I in my youth, bata pa ako noon, <laughs> many years ago, um, I was I was feeling down a little bit, and you know, I was I felt that I was burned out and everything, and I was. Talking to, to, to Tito Tony Meloto. And he told me, you know, I never, I never get burned out. When I'm tired, I sleep. <laughs> when I, you know, he said that that plane rides are actually a, a you know luxury for him because that's the time he gets to catch up with, with movies because he loves watching movies. Right. And then he said, we talked about inspiration and how I said, you know, I find it, you know, uh, I'm I'm struggling because uh you um because you know, there was just a lot of things going on, you know, at that time. And, you know, um, he said, he told me to, to never find inspiration, never seek inspiration from outside or from external, but always seek inspiration from within. That it should be, you know, it should be, uh, it should be coming from your own spirit, knowing who you are and knowing what you want. And that, that just reminded me of that conversation I had, what you shared, Tito. Uh, just really reminded me of that conversation I had with uh, with Tito Tony. Now that was very powerful. Um, I think that you know what we do here in Gawad Kalinga. To your point, is that it is really something that it is for us in the sense that it's something that our spirit yearns for. It's something that you know that that we just absolutely have to respond to, right? Um, and so it doesn't really. Um, it doesn't really matter what you know what goes on around. Obviously, for practical terms, you have to respond to to you know external factors, but it should not determine the spirit of you know of what we do, right? So, um, Tito, any any message for our Philippine, especially for our um, our Filipino American audience here? I'm not trying. I'm not. Hopefully, I'm not alienating yeah. the Filipinos only. Not. <laughs> Americans, um, but I thought it would be a fitting, uh, you know, fitting uh, message for them as as we uh, we now have a new president. Uh, yesterday, I, I I feel like I would be remiss not to you know not to acknowledge uh, that uh, we have a new president who was inaugurated yesterday, uh, President Joe uh, Biden. Um, any message for Filipino Americans um, and how you know how how this. Uh, uh, turn of events uh, might uh, might you know affect what they do, what they can do. Maybe not only for for the U.S. but also for the Philippines. Well, uh, it's it's not it's we are in a different uh, position, like uh, we discussed earlier. The we see the greater relationship between the Philippines and the United States. We see less of the internal uh, dynamics because we care less about the internal dynamics. We care more about the bigger relationship. That means how are we with America? How is America with us? Uh, we are just more pro-America. Uh, whether that is right or wrong, that's not for me to judge. But this is for me to state 
because it has been proven so that by a vast majority, Filipinos are pro-America. One is because of history and the influence that, that history has left. But the greater factor for me is because of Filipino Americans. Because millions of Filipino Americans do not forget the tens of millions of Filipinos in the motherland. We have a historical relationship, but we have a bigger, more powerful live relationship. Okay, that's why I say it's not a matter of right and wrong, it's a matter of fact. When I was still in the state doing uh, GK work on a regular basis, there was one Christmas when I was told by one remittance company that there were 1 million separate transactions on either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Wow. Okay. So I, I said, that's what keeps us together, even if many things have become very different. And that is all uh, I can think of, that you as Filipino Americans, if you don't forget us and you strive to be the best who you are there, we will benefit from it. And we, I don't like us to be just asking from you. I just want us to remind you there that, hey, our good points, they are real too. No? The, the best of us, it's not fake news. It's true. And we have centuries of history to prove that it's true. We have a choice to highlight what is ugly about us or to inspire people with what is beautiful about us. And all I know from life is whatever you give attention to is that is what will grow. So I will only ask, remember the best parts and offer that there. And as you remember that, it makes us remember that too here because we are still so connected. Okay, and we will try also to increase that best part of us, you know, and delete the ugly part of us. It's a continuing struggle and we are there with you, okay? So uh, that's my message there, Don. I love that, Tito Boy. Um, so I actually regularly give trainings and one of those trainings I did uh, was uh, I highlighted what Bayanihan is, you know, among Filipinos. And it was a, it was a mixed audience, from, you know, different nationalities and everything. And they love it. They've never heard anything like that before. They've never heard that, that you know, word before. And when I explained what it was, it, that it was, you know, coming together and working, working together toward, you know, a common goal, right? And they love it. So you can apply it into any, you know, in, in, in in any situation, right? That was that was actually a uh, training on personal finance, and we were talking about building a team. When you build a team, you know the spirit of of, of bayanihan, you know, comes in very handy, right? And so the, here here was I, a Filipino, teaching bayanihan to non-Filipinos, and I just I just so love it, right? It wasn't, um, and I love their reaction for it too because it it was something that again they never heard before, and they thought it was really cool, right? So. So I I love I love what you shared, Tito. So, okay, so we're almost uh wow, it's been it's been an hour. I can't believe it. <laughs> um, so sabi ko nga Tito boy earlier, di ba? You were asking how how I'm how I'm liking doing Quantum GK. I forget that I'm hosting it and then doing interview. Super ako nage enjoy when when I talk to people. And I forget that. Ay o nga pala, time na nga pala. Um, but anyway, there's more people greeting Tito. Um, from Ariel Malikse, nice to see you, Kuya Boy. From uh, Sonia Capon, 
Good morning po from GK Montano of Alangalang Leyte. From uh, Boeing do Cervera, a blessed and blissful celebration of the matrimony of marriage Donna. Thank you so much. Um, from Soledad Obedoza Montilla, watching from Villases, Pangasinan. And from Carlos Capati. Hi, Tito Charlie. It's an honor to watch our GK philosopher. See, this is why it made me nervous. Because, oh my gosh. <laughs> Sabi ko, maintindihan ko kaya lahat ng sasabihin ni Tito Boy. <laughs> from, from Josie Castro. Kuya Boy has a way of moving one spirit to be one with the poor. And I so agree. Tito Boy, so in the maybe the next couple of minutes or so, um, what is your vision for, for Gawad Kalinga? We're closing into the 2024, right? So that's like three years from now. I remember our battle cry. Uh, you know, uh, the, our, our, uh, our, well, it's not the end goal, right? But we have a, we have a, uh, a 2024 deadline, right? So where do you see Gawad Kalinga in 2024 or three to five years from now? Well, the, the direction of Gawad Kalinga has been set, and I agree. Uh, 2024, there is there is something that is more mechanical in, in expression about 2024. Luis put it very nicely in the form of the three gears. That the mission of GK is to spread the GK spirit and influence that spirit to be more compassionate to those who have less in life. And that is how we will build from the bottom. I have no, I have no fear. I have no, I have no fear that it will not happen. I have no illusion either that it will happen in the way that most people think it will happen. Right. This is to me just my deep faith that the convictions of GK are so deep and so powerful that they will not they will not lessen when people like me are out of the scene. No, talagang that the the path of the youth today, as I see it, this new wave of consciousness is something that GK has started already for 20 years. So I do not fear for the future of GK as far as the new generations are concerned. GK will happen as long as GK does not think that the secret is in the name. As long as GK does not think that the organization is bigger and better than others, as long as DK will just remember that it is a spirit and a movement, no? And just be not afraid to, to share it. And if I also may, uh, at this end, Walang Iwanan Alliance will morph into something that is entirely already inside the GK spirit. Do you know that we went as high as 30% of our people experiencing hunger once in a while, but there is no one hunger map in the Philippines. And that is why when things go bad, regarding hunger, we don't notice it until it becomes very bad. So I hope that I can influence Walang Iwanan Alliance to build that hunger map from data and that data to come basically from the stories of people who are helping other people. And to build the hunger map, we must build a map of allies, a map of people who feel the same way and are committed to help in their own way. 
And I believe that we cannot go on just trying to mitigate hunger. I believe we must go on committed to end hunger. That yes, I know, in the real sense, hunger will never go away, but they must be addressed immediately as, they, as it comes. And the only way is to have enough people on the ground committed to respond to hunger quickly as it arises. And I will, I'm going to make that the, you know, a, a, personal, a personal mission. My contribution to GK and watch for it, watch for it, Donna, in the, in this next few months, we will go into something much more that I think you can benefit from. And it will be about awareness. It will be about spreading the word. Okay, and may I, may I wish for you to grow, to grow fast, to be less fearful, to reach out to more people, uh, to find ways that you can replicate, that you can inspire other people to do the same thing that you are doing and just try to give the same message, the same message of caring and of sharing it will work in America as it will work here in the Philippines. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Ito Boy. Um, there's so much, you know, that there's so much takeaways from, from this uh, Kwentuhan, from this conversation. Um, but, you know, you, uh, I, I think you, you uh, that, that, that's how we could end it in that way already, right? To use our own voice to, to spread uh, news, to raise awareness about what's going on in the Philippines, um, to address hunger, to help uh, to help out and um, and just you know um, get the word out and get as many people as possible to to be part of this movement. So thank you so much, Tito Boy, uh, friends. Uh, gawa, in the Gawad Karinga, um, Tito Boy Montelibano at Kwentong GK this evening. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Donna. Make it a habit every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. Please tune in. At Quantum GK. Good night. Bye, Tito. Bye. Thank you, everybody.